Hello everyone, welcome to Divine Conversations. Thank you guys so very much for tuning in. Happy Sunday. If you are watching this on Sunday, uh, I hope you guys are having an excellent day. I hope you guys are having a fantastic weekend. And if you're not watching this on Sunday, I just hope that you're having a great day. Yeah, and that this message and this video is finding you at a somewhat joyful time in your life. At least maybe hopefully you can look past all of the troubles that you may be having and find the joy in your moment, yeah? All right guys, so in this session, we are going to talk about the new moon in Taurus that we have coming on June 10th. That is Thursday, June 10th of 2021. Uh, he, please keep in mind guys that we are talking about this uh, moon phase from the sidereal point of view, the true sidereal point of view. Yes, we're not talking about mainstream or tropical astrology here. However, if you are inclined to watch this reading and yet you're more familiar with mainstream or top tropical astrology, I highly recommend that you just chill with us for a few minutes and listen to the messages that are coming through in this session here and just see how it fits or resonates with you. There is no right or wrong way to do this, you guys. There are so many different systems in terms of astrology, and each one has their own value, okay? But it's really all about what you resonate with the most. And for me, personally, and here on this channel, Divine Conversations, sidereal astrology is what we resonate with here, yeah? All right, guys. So we're going to talk about uh, this new moon here. Um, but in terms of talking about the moon, new moon, um, I want to go back and recap because I feel like what we've been going through over the last two weeks, I want to say since the last full moon we had, which was on May 26th, that was in Scorpio, there has been a, I, I want to call it like a trifecta of major transits over the last two weeks that have really been helping facilitate us to work on ourselves, to work on our sense of being, who we are, our drive, and the direction that we're going in. And there have been a lot of aspects over this period that have really helped to put the focus on a more authentic version of yourself, more authentic expression, um, helping you to break free or break away from certain elements of your path that are less than authentic for you. This has been a time of true authenticity, yes. And so I'm calling this trifecta, a trifecta, because I believe the three major transits over the last two weeks, there are three of them that have really been focusing us or putting us in this focus. It started with the full moon uh, lunar eclipse in Scorpio that was over on back on May 26th. That was part one, I'm saying. And in that sense, I uh, when we were talking about that, when that happened, I named that the eclipse of self. Then we moved forward. Two days later, Mercury went into retrograde, also in Taurus. Um, and at that point, I kind of labeled that Mercury retrograde or this current Mercury retrograde that we're in. It goes until the 28th of June. I'm sorry, the 23rd of June. Um, it started on May 28th. It goes until May, the, the 23rd of June. Um, and I have named that this Mercury, this current Mercury grade, Mercury retrograde as the remodeling of self, right? Because it, ha it has elements of taking what came through in the eclipse, um, I'm sorry, in the full moon, lunar eclipse, um, it took elements that we have been able or we are able to get a deeper understanding of um, We could uh, and, and start to work with that, start to reshape that, start to get your mind in a place where you can find or take what was uncovered during the full moon, during the energies of the full moon, and start to reshape your mind space around it, start to get a different understanding of it, right? Mercury being in retrograde, Mercury is the planet of your mind, your thoughts, the intellect, um, how you think, how you learn, how you communicate. Also, Mercury is a, a, a the planet of communication, right? Or a planet of communication. And often people get kind of scared when Mercury goes into retrograde because 
that's when things can kind of go awry. People say you don't want to sign contracts. Fights and, and breakups can happen. People from the past can, can come back into your life, this, that, and the third. It's really not all that bad. It's really, it's really just a moment where the energies of Mercury can go kind of into an autopilot energy. So you have to pay extra attention to the words that you use and because arguments can come up because of miscommunications. Also, you don't necessarily not want to sign contracts or do any, make any sort of agreements. You just want to make sure that everything that's coming through or everything that you're agreeing to, you understand. You know what's going on. You haven't missed any of the details. You want to pay attention to the fine print, okay? But anyway, that's Mercury in retrograde. And then finally, moving forward, what we're really going to talk about here is the new moon solar eclipse, which is happening in Taurus, okay? Now, the first thing that I want to point out um, in this situation is that I find it really awesome that we started the cycle with the full moon being in Scorpio while the sun is in Taurus. Again, this is from Sidereal Astrology. So in that sense, the full moon, the full moon being a phase in which you know, the moon, the energies of the moon, the potential of the moon is at its highest. So this is a moment where you want to really get started on your manifestations or if you if you practice witchcraft or you practice spell casting or anything, the new moon, I'm sorry, the full moon <clears throat> is the best time for you to put, for you to start those things or to get going because the power of the moon is at its fullest. And in the full moon phase, with the full moon, with the moon having been in Scorpio at that time, Scorpio being the sign of the deepest depths of the occult, of secrets, of that which is taboo. Um, the Scorpio is the ruler of the eighth house. The eighth house also has to do with money from other people, other people's money and finances in that sense. Um, but when the full moon was in Scorpio, at that time, it was, and even still, like, you still could be going through all of this. This is not really that much of a linear thing. It's really, it's an energetic thing. So this can be happening for you at any moment, at any given moment, and in any real order, to be honest. Um, it really just depends on where you are in your path and what you're going through in your life at the time. But the full moon in Scorpio really gave us an opportunity to break through a lot of what has been hidden and break through a lot of the illusions that were happening. What was helping, what was helping us break through the illusions at that time was the fact that, which was it? Neptune. Well, Neptune is currently... Give me a second here, guys. Yeah. No, Nept Neptune is not retrograde. Rep Neptune is direct. However, Neptune has been forming a lot of squares with certain major planets over the last two weeks, but especially during that eclipse in Scorpio. Neptune being the planet of, um, you know, uh, secrets and illusions and, um, you know, partying and that kind of thing, but um, very much an illusionary type energy. Um, very much a hazy, you know, almost drunken type of energy, right? It could be at least. And with the squares that were being formed between Neptune and certain planets and the full moon having been in Scorpio at that time, it gave us a really strong opportunity to break through a lot of the illusions, to see past a lot of the illusions, to uncover a lot of things in our lives that were no longer comfortable for us, didn't resonate with us, and what we could face so that we could make some sort of change, okay? The other um, really important aspect in terms of that has been Uranus. Uranus has been retrograde. And yeah, Uranus is in, uh, is in, I'm sorry, no, that's Pluto. I'm sorry, not Uranus, Pluto. Pluto has been retrograde in Sagittarius throughout this time, um, since like, uh, since before the last full moon, but what has been important is the fact that uh, Pluto has been retrograde in Sagittarius. Pluto being the planet of death and rebirth, right? Now, these are the outer planets, Neptune and Pluto, two of the outer planets. So the outer planets really talk about um, your deep 
deep, deep elements of the self. And also this is kind of where we get into collective energies because as the further we move out in the galaxy or in our solar system, the deeper it gets and the less personal it gets, to be honest. I mean, you could still talk about it in a personal sense, but when you get out to the outer planets, that's also where you can get out into the realm of the collective. Okay, but with Pluto having been retrograde in Sagittarius, um, this is a time where uh, we can go back and visit some of the deeper aspects of ourselves, especially with Mercury being in retrograde, where you have the time to, or the, uh, the, the energetic space to really change the way you think about things, change the way you understand things intellectually on the mind level. And then uh, helping that is Pluto being in retrograde in Sagittarius. So Pluto being the, the planet of death and rebirth, this is a this is transformation, right? Sagittarius is a, is a sign of expansion and theory and philosophy, okay? So um, a lot of your thought patterns, a lot of your belief systems, a lot of the way that you understand things could now has, it now has the energetic background or energetic support to change, to go through a transformation. And this is all, and this all has to do with the self, okay? So moving forward, then we moved to Mercury going in retrograde, and now it really is a time where you can really think about things in a different way. Moving forward, now we get to the new moon solar eclipse in Taurus. All right, so what is a new moon? A new moon is a time where the power or the energy of the moon is at its lowest, okay? But that's not a bad thing because at this point, a new moon is the perfect time for you to start to put things into action. A new moon is a time of new beginnings, okay? Now, as I said, our last lunar eclipse and full moon was in Scorpio in which we were provided with an opportunity to uncover parts of ourselves and or our internal reality that had, that had been hidden or buried. The following days of after that lunar eclipse have been made up of aspects that continue to support these revelations and deeper understandings. Moving into the solar eclipse now, things that have been uncovered and understandings we may have been able to come to now can be acted on. Now we can put these plans we can put a plan of action into place we can we can start to implement all of the things that we may have wanted to do we may have tried to do okay now lunar and solar eclipses always happen one after another so you can think of these as like a cycle of a complete like wash and rinse right so with the first one we got that wash we went through the, and, and now with the 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 well with the the full moon we got that wash with the with the 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 new moon now we get the rinse and now we get to implement things yeah okay so looking when looking at the astrological chart you can always tell the new moon from the full moon by the aspects that it makes with the sun so when the moon is opposing the sun when they're opposite each other that's when we have a full moon and that's when the last uh lunar eclipse i'm sorry solar eclipse happened but now in a new moon the energy, the, the sun and the moon are conjunct each other. They're, 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 the energies are blending, are fusing together, okay? So this is where, now, okay, so with we had the, 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 the full moon solar eclipse where they were opposing each other, right? So this is where it started to begin to, um, your inner and outer reality had the opportunity, had that open window to break apart and you could see it for what it was so that you can now pick out the pieces that you wanted to remodel this energy within your life, right? Between your inner and outer reality. But now that they are conjunct, now we have the opportunity to glue everything back together. So everything that you've been come, that you've been in the process of coming to a deeper or a new understanding of, now you have the um, the 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 supportive energies of the conjunction between the sun and the moon, where now your energies, now your reality, can fuse together. Coupled with that. At the time of this new moon, which is going to be around 5.35 in the morning um, on the 10th of June, that's Eastern Standard Time from the, from the place of, from like New York City. But around 5.35, 5.34 Eastern Standard Time AM 
on the 10th of June is when this actual new moon is going to happen, right? That's when the moon is going to be in this phase. And at that time, yes, we have the conjunction between the sun and the moon where your energies of your inner and outer reality can now start to refuse back together. But also we have Mercury in conjunction with the sun and the moon. So everything that has been happening for you during Mer Mercury retrograde, Again, all of the things that have been uncovering, all of the things that you've been coming to understand, all of the new elements of your life that you've been figuring out, that you've been planning for, that you've been, uh, that you've been taking notes on, that you've been getting your intellectual insights surrounding. Now, the conjunction between the sun, the moon, and Mercury, now you can fuse all of this together, okay? This is really, really beautiful. Keep in mind, though, what is continuing to uh, keep this energy of... Um, Seeing through the illusion is the square <laughs> between the sun, moon, Mercury, and Neptune. Now, at this time, Neptune is squaring the sun, is squaring the moon, and is squaring Mercury. Even though a square is a difficult energy, it's where the two are completely different from each other, right? This is, that's, this is a right angle, but this is half of a square, and this is kind of what a square represents. You have one energy of one planet here coming in this direction, you have another en energy of another planet here coming in this direction, and now they're meeting each other, and they're squaring off, okay? So they're, they're, they're facing each other. And it's almost as if, with Neptune being, with squaring these three major planets, what's going on with Venus? Nothing. Okay. And, ah, but it's trining Mars. Okay. So with the, the square between Neptune and the sun, moon, and Mercury, these energies are squaring off with each other. And it's almost as if Nep the, the energies of Neptune are saying to you, keep your mind right. Okay. Remember what you are written, understanding. Remember what you are uncovering. Remember what secrets or what illusions you are working on coming out of. Even though this square is, a, again, is a somewhat challenging energy it's a pretty challenging energy it still feels like this is a supportive energy it's like it's a reminder keep your mind right keep your vision straight make sure that you keep in the forefront what illusions of grandeur even you could say are you breaking out of as you go through this remodeling phase all right um Last, uh, uh, let's see, what do I want to do here? I want to talk, I, before I move forward, I want to just say, I want to speak to the trine between Neptune and Mars. Now, Mars has been in Cancer for the last few days. Um, at the moment of the new moon, Mars will be of five degrees of Cancer. Mars is debilitated in Cancer, okay? And what I've been getting with this energy of Mars being in Cancer right now, it's like there is, um... With all of this remodeling and reshaping energy and, 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 re -under and understanding your life from a new point of view, Mars being in Cancer has been a moment where you might have felt like your personal drive has been maybe uh, <laughs> under assault or under attack. You might feel that way. But ultimately, coupled with everything else that's going on here astrologically, this is just a way for you to get a deeper understanding of your drive, of your direction moving forward in life, and how that can be applied to not only yourself, but the collective, or your family, your friends, or people that are closest to you, maybe even just the people that you serve, if this is like if you're a healer or whatnot, or an energy worker, or, or, or anything. How does your drive and what it is you're trying to do with your life or for your life, how does that connect with the people around you? How does that affect the people around you? Cancer is an energy of nurturing, of loving, caring. It's of, of the home and of the family and, and that kind of thing. Mars is a very independent, self-centered energy. However, with Mars being in Cancer, like I said, this has been a time where you can really remodel or reshape your drive in terms of how to better serve your family, your environment, the people around you, or just the collective, okay? Now, Neptune is trining Mars. So this is another positive aspect in terms of breaking free from the illusions. Um, Mars is also, uh, 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 I'm sorry, breaking free from the illusions in terms of your drive and the direction that you're moving in and what it is you personally want to achieve in life, okay? At least in your life moving forward. And then the other part about this is, at, is that at the time of the new moon, Mars will be at five degrees of Cancer, which is a, in the beginning phases of Cancer. So to me, that gives 
more of an easier opportunity to make some changes in the direction, to reshape your direction, or just to integrate this more, more uh, collective oriented focus. I mean, Pisces is really the energy uh, or the, the sign of the collective, but Cancer, with, with Cancer being a, um, a loving and nurturing and family oriented energy, I'm still feeling there's something collective having to do with this maybe for a good amount of you, or maybe just for a certain amount of you. For others of you, it doesn't have to be the collective. It could just be your family, your friends, people that are closest to you, all right? Now, with Mars being at five degrees of Cancer, again, this is a beginning phases of Cancer, so I feel like there's a, a, a greater opportunity for you to make some changes uh, in your direction, uh, rather than it being later in Cancer. If it were later in Cancer, I feel like it would be a little bit diff more difficult to make these changes. Also, five degrees, five is a number of change. Yes, it's also a number of challenge, but it's still a number of change. And even though this is this might be a little bit challenging for you in terms of your drive and your direction and the way you're moving in life, again, the square with Neptune in the sun, moon, and Mercury, again, I feel like is helping you in make it, making these changes. Again, I know this sounds, it, 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 these are these are challenging aspects, and yet it still just feels like it's supporting you here, okay? It feels like a supportive energy in terms of your life right now. <laughs> Sorry, my hair is kind of wet. Okay, um, moving forward here. Let's see. Now. Mm -hmm. All right, moving forward. The new moon solar eclipse is going to be in Taurus, which is really, again, so super awesome because what kicked off this situation, the full moon lunar eclipse, the moon was in, uh, sorry, Scorpio at that time. Scorpio and Taurus are the exact opposites of each other, okay? Taurus talks about, Taurus represents the earth and uh, your values, uh, um, your comfort, what it is you really enjoy in life. Um, it, it represents planting your seeds and giving them the, the nurturing, loving environment to, to grow and expand. Um, uh, it, it, uh, Taurus represents, Taurus is a fixed sign, <clears throat> just like Scorpio, but Taurus in this case represents your surface level energy, your, your relation to the earth, and it also represents an energy of slowly moving forward, step by step, a methodical moving forward. Scorpio is the opposite. Scorpio, de where, where Taurus deals with the topical, the, the, the surface level. Scorpio deals with what, everything that's underneath the surface, okay? Water and earth really do go together. Water is a, is a, Scorpio is a water sign, Taurus is an earth sign. And so when you combine these two energies together, you do get a fertile energy or a fertile environment to grow, to expand, to do more. You could even see Scorpio as the mulch or the, the compost or like the decay and the death and decay that happens within the earth that then provides a fertile ground for things to grow in, correct? Okay, so the new moon solar eclipse will be in Taurus, the sign of nature, nurturance, growth, and steady, albeit slow process. In Taurus, we are provided with the stable, fertile ground in which we can plant the seeds that will provide us with the bountiful and beautiful harvest later on, provided that we nurture those seeds properly throughout the growth process. Here, we can put into place a practical plan towards the seeds of understanding generated since the last moon phase, since the full moon, okay? So everything that has come up for you, everything that has been generated for you, you now should be able to have a little seed that you can plant into the ground and start to put into practical action, okay? The moon is in Taurus here. So the moon has gone from Scorpio in the full moon where it, uh, things were uncovered. It worked its way through over this time period and now it's in Taurus. Now you will have the opportunity with, especially since the new moon is a time of new beginnings, now you will have the opportunity to plant those seeds and take practical action, okay? I love how we went from one side of the equation all the way to the opposite side of the equation and it all is helping us put this into place. 
Start this new program. Start this new job. Start this new path. Start this new reality for yourself. This is the perfect time to do it with the new moon, okay? I really hope this is making sense. Now, I see two major aspects that are really supporting this process for us. One of them I spoke of already. It's the Mercury, it's Mercury uh, retrograde conjuncting with the sun and the moon. And also, no, I'm sorry, the sun, with just the sun and the moon. Okay, this is the time of discovery and response and reshaping. I'm sorry, this time of discovery and reshaping has been greatly influenced by Mercury and retrograde. With this aspect, we see the energies of all three planets coming together to aid in this activation or implementation. Okay, now. For some, this may actually look like all of the madness or all of the craziness that's been going on lately or the confusing energies. All of a sudden, it all just becomes crystal clear. Like suddenly, out of nowhere, it all just starts to make sense. And that's the energy that is really going to help you get going, get moving, put this new cycle or these new energies into action, okay? Now, the second major aspect that I saw in this that I feel like is really going to help us here is Saturn in retrograde, which is trining the sun, moon, and Mercury, okay? This is a really beautiful aspect. Now, Saturn has been retrograde in Capricorn, and as I've been reading through this, I've been seeing it as, you know, Saturn coming through and really trying to ask you if where you're headed or what you've been doing over this time period, is that still what you want to do, okay? Big Papa Saturn has been retrograde in Capricorn, providing us with a way out of some of the potentially deeply entrenched energies we may have been within, okay? So uh, anything uh, anything that you feel felt bound to, anything that you felt a strong attachment to, anything that you feel that you needed to be released from, and you may, and to be honest, now I'm kind of feeling like some of you have not, didn't even know you wanted to be released from this, whatever this is, has been for you up until now. And all of the planetary transits that have been going on since the last full moon have been helping to break your awareness, have been helping to break you out of the illusion, have been helping to break you out of a sense of being on autopilot. And now you're getting to see the situation from a different aspect. And with Saturn, moving retrograde through Capricorn, this has felt like Saturn literally saying, do you still want to be doing this or do you want to change your lane or do you want to change how you move forward here? Okay. Now this trine is providing constricting and confining or even defining energies that to help that help us to ground all of the changes that have been coming up for us and provide us with a solid structure okay saturn is the is the planet of constriction and confining and confinement and yes in some elements that can be really terrible that can be really awful and we really don't want to be confined in this way but it can also be beneficial in terms of helping us to pro helping to provide us with a structure, with some sort of base, with some sort of grounding that we can now put practical application into. The opposite planet to Saturn's constrict constriction is Jupiter, which is ex ex an expanding energy. However, during this new moon. The only thing we have, in, we have going on with Jupiter is a trine to Venus, which can help you, again, with expanding on how to communicate or work with others. Venus is in Gemini right now, and with Venus in Gemini, this is a really good time to connect with people on an intellectual level, okay? So, um... <laughs> I hope my wet hair isn't distracting anybody. So anyway, <coughs> excuse me. Um, so, Plu I'm sorry. So Jupiter is is trining with Venus right now. So that also helps to really, like I said, it helps to um, expand on how it is you really want to interact with others. Okay, and then Saturn is bringing you that that confining energy where now you can bring it all into the central focus or you can bring it all down to the ground or you can put it in some sort of structure to now have some sort of practical application in your life, okay? 
Another aspect that caught my, my eye was Mars in Cancer, opposing retrograde Pluto, but we already spoke about that in Sagittarius. Uh, but let's say, for some individuals, these energies or this time period, period can be helping to shift their motive and drive in life from a self-centered orientation to a more community orientation with Mars at five degrees of Cancer. We already went over this. Now, a semi-sextile between Mars and Jupiter is, um, oh, that's right. I forgot about that. There he goes. It's see, I see it right now. Okay, so a semi-sextile between Mars and Jupiter is a boon of grace, luck, and goodwill in the creative potential of this change or realignment. Now, think about it this way. A sextile is a beneficial energy, just like a trine. But the thing between a trine and a, and a sextile is that you really have to choose to work with these energies. Now, a sextile, to me, sex, a sextile has the word sex in it. So to me, that's uh, uh, an, uh, an element of creative potential, right? A semi-sextile is just a, a less, a, a, a not as strong version as a full sextile. And again, it's something that you have to choose to work with, okay? But like I said, this can be seen as like a boon of grace, luck, and goodwill in the creative potential of this change or realignment. Just remember to choose to take action, okay? Take choose, choose to take advantage of this if you want to. If you really want to use these energies, you have to choose to work with it, okay? Honestly, the biggest choice to make is whether to realign or not. And should you make that choice, should you get to the point where you're like, you're saying to yourself, okay, yes, I want to realign here. I want to change. I want to go, I want to change my values in some way. Then that would be you taking advantage of that sextile. Jupiter will have your back if you choose to take this opportunity, okay? Now, finally, we have Neptune squaring off with our power trio here. And, it, and everything that has been challenging an aspect, it's still, even though this is a challenging aspect, it is still benefit, it is still beneficial as it can help us break through illusions, like I said earlier, all right? So, that's the theory of the situation. Let's get into some cards here, okay? Um... Now, with all of that said, keep in mind, guys, that the point here is that you have the opportunity to put new cycles, new phases, new, uh, new uh, actions into place. Yeah? One last shuffle here. I'm using the Moonology deck to start. And we're going to see what is the theme here, Spirit. What messages do we have for the collective in terms of this new moon? Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Okay, we're starting with a new moon energy. However, um, it's the new moon in Sagittarius in this deck. But first card out here is luck is on your side. Okay, luck is on your side. But in order to really take advantage of this situation, you're going to have to step out of your comfort zone and stepping out of your comfort zone is definitely where you're where you want to be in terms of in, implementing new processes new paths new directions in your life okay okay so things to keep aware of you need to understand as you're moving through these energies, nothing is set in stone, okay? Just because you have a plan of action or you have a new direction to move in, it doesn't mean that everything is solidified just yet. It doesn't need to be solidified just yet. What's most important for us during this time period of this new moon is to remember that, remember what it is that we've learned, remember what we've come to an understanding of, and then just put our plan of action into place. Don't worry about all the other stuff that could potentially happen. Don't worry about the what ifs, the ifs, the ands, the buts, or whatnot, whatever. Don't worry about all that. Just for, just keep your, your mind centrally focused on following through with your plan following through with your plan of action, okay? And also understand that during this time period, your, you and your loved, loved ones are, are safe, so it is okay for you to step out of your comfort zone. And the one thing you wanna do the most is make sure that you're bringing love into the situation, all right? Love, compassion, and understanding. Especially with Mars having been in Cancer during this time, I feel like 
like I've been saying over the last week, and if you're new to me and, and, and whatnot, or if you just haven't been able to check it out yet, I have a new series that I started that's kind of an evolved version of Morning Coffee, which was my daily reading. <clears throat> it's now called The Daily Dose, where I take astrology, the, the daily astrology aspects, and we talk about that, and then we do a card reading uh, surrounding those energies. Um, but what I've been talking about over this last, I guess, week that Mars has been in Cancer, your physical drive or what it is you want to do has been kind of in opposition with what the collective or what the people around you really want and need and have kind of been clashing because Mars is debilitated in Cancer, all right? So that that seems to be what the big the big message there is in terms of your drive and your action, bringing love into the situation. How can you bring more love and more compassion and more of a, a community or um, <clears throat> collective focus into your drive, into your action? I mean, for me personally, I'm going through some changes that, you know, where I was really adamant about not giving in to certain elements of the collective in the past now that's changing for me because I've gone through my own growth process and, I, and my own healing process personally. And now I can put myself into a certain situation that I didn't, I was not willing to be in in the past or really not even able to be in in the past to be of greater service of the collective. And that's how Mars has been, Mars in Cancer for me personally has been affecting or changing my life. All right. So there's a, that's kind of a, I mean, yeah. So that could be a little bit of a, a, a view into how this is working out for you, yeah? All right, next thing that I wanna, I wanna get into is um, the Sacred Destiny deck, and I wanna see what keywords we have for the collective in this time moving forward, yeah? Last shuffle here. So what keywords, Spirit, do you have for us in terms of this new moon? What changes are coming into play? What energies can we focus on in this new moon here, please, Spirit? Very beautiful. Okay. Okay, uh, at the bottom of the deck, we do have patience. We, so we definitely wanna work on remaining as patient as possible. Um, we have openness and security. We have blessings and we have inner peace. Okay, um, so it, I definitely want to start with inner peace here because what it feels like has been happening since the full moon in Scorpio now to the new moon in Taurus, where we were uncovering new things. We went through, we started the Mercury retrograde and now we're putting a plan, we're implementing things. We're putting plan in, a, a plan into action, right? We're planting our seeds and starting to nurture them so that we have a new plant, a new harvest growing over time. That has all been facilitating our inner peace, a sense of inner peace for ourselves, okay? Um, you have to be, you have to remain open to the blessings that could be, that could potentially be coming through for you, not just for yourself, but also for the people around you. Again, my intuition is taking me to Mars being in Cancer. This is more, this is where you really start to, in some cases, you may be forced to look at how you are, how your actions are relating to others, okay? So with everything that has been changing, with all of the information that we have the potential of gaining over this time, now you can really be open to the blessings of how you can shift and grow and change your reality and how you can better relate to the people around you, okay? Uh, finally, we do have security, okay? You need to understand that there is security here, especially in Taurus with this new moon, with this, both the sun, the moon, and Mercury. What is What else? We have the sun, the moon, Mercury, and the north, north node all in Taurus. And what this is saying to me here is that you are secure. You have to just trust that the earth will support you. I mean, if you really think about it, when you take all the societal conditioning out of, this, of our minds, the earth provides us with everything we need. Plants and animals, earth, uh, the, 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 the trees that, 
you know, take in carbon monoxide or carbon dioxide, excuse me, and breathe out oxygen. And the earth provides us with everything that we need. So remain open. <clears throat> Remain as open as you possibly can and allow yourself to settle into or to trust the security of the earth and all of the planetary aspects that are really helping to support change within us. Allow your sense of security to allow you to be more open. Okay. Wow. Okay. So with that said, I want to close this part of our reading, this part of our session with the Gaia Oracle. And then I'm going to take this to an extended version over on Patreon for all my Patreoners, those of you that are in the Inner Balance, collect, uh, Inner Balance package or the Full Monty. And we're gonna dive deeper in terms of the Tarot here. It's not. It's probably not gonna be that long, a short maybe, maybe 15 minutes or so, but we're just gonna get some deeper aspects. And if you'd like to follow us over, over to Patreon, I highly recommend that you do so. We have a lot of fun over there. Divine, Con uh, I'm sorry, patreon.com slash divine conversations. The link can be found in the description box below, yeah? But I do wanna close this part of the reading out, this part of our session out with, a closing message from the Gaia Oracle, okay? One last shuffle here. All right. Closing message, you guys. Now, I highly recommend that if you're having any trouble understanding what's going on, um, definitely go back and, and review some of the topics we've been talking about over the last... I want to say two weeks during while we were doing the um, the daily dose. Okay, if you really want to, I, I recommend. I, I really kind of feel like it would be beneficial to go back to those videos and those readings and listen to what was coming out during those times. That will help you implement or get a greater understanding of what you can be putting into action or putting into place at this time. Oh my God, you guys! Oh my God, you guys! This is so beautiful. I, um, okay, this is really quite beautiful. So we have two cards here that are really, that are so incredibly perfect. The first one, which supports your, this energy of uh, stepping out of your comfort zone here, you have card number 18, apprehension, moving out into the world, doubt and fear. And then the second card that we have is card number 40, yin yang, uh, creating harmony through balance. And that's what you can really, that's what we really see, or that's what we really have the opportunity to really integrate into our lives, especially since we have what, what this is, we're talking about a new moon. And when the new, when we have a new moon, we have a conjunction between the sun and the moon, yin and yang. Okay, creating harmony in its in this conjunction that we can that we have our sun and our moon, our inner and external realities coming back or fusing back together to form this new version of ourselves. Right? Okay, I will say at the bottom of the deck we do have purification. Okay, this has been this whole time period from the from the full moon now to the new moon has been a time of purification, breaking free from the illusions with all of these squares between with with all these squares with Neptune and uh, Mercury, not Mercury, uh, Pluto, the planet of death and rebirth, did planet of destruction, but also recreation has been in retrograde in Sagittarius, which has been giving us a, a new look, a new perspective, a deeper look on our uh, uh, philosophies and our theories and how we conceptualize the world. This purification process has been all in an effort of bringing a greater balance, greater harmony into our lives. All right, let's first read apprehension. Moving out into the world, doubt and fear. It is time to get going. There is nothing to fear. Take the first step, just do it. And you will find that all will work out for you. The longer you procrastinate, the harder it will be. It's understandable that you feel unsure of yourself, 
The first step is sometimes the hardest. You have much to offer and you will realize that as you move out into, and you will realize this as you move out into the world, excuse me, let me say that again. You have much to offer and you will realize this as you move out into the world. Be brave. Even if you initially make mistakes, you will be, rece you will be well received. Treat every day as a learning experience. As your confidence increases, so too will your self-esteem and success. You are a sincere and beautiful person. Do not doubt yourself. And then finally, we have yin and yang. There is currently disharmony in some area of your life due to your refusal to accept certain aspects of your personality. Nothing about you is bad. Every trait or quality you possess serves a worthwhile purpose. Moreover, any trait or quality that you think you lack, you actually have. Make a list of all the things about you that you don't like. Then think about how each of these things serves you and others in some way. Next, make a list of all the things you do like about yourself. It is natural to believe that your positive qualities undoubtedly serve both you and others. However, for every perceived positive, there is also a negative. Now think about the negative aspects of your perceived positivities. This process takes a bit of time and requires an open heart and mind. It is definitely a worthwhile experience, for in the end, you will hopefully see that nothing is actually good or bad. Every aspect of you serves both you and others. Owning, accepting, and loving what is without wanting to change it will lead you to experience a happier, healthier, and more harmonious life. Beautiful, guys. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, all right. We're going to leave it there. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful for you. I hope this gave you a little bit of insight as to what the potential of this new moon in Taurus can provide to you. Again, I am going to go into a bit of an extended version here and we're going to be looking at the Tarot. I'm just going to be, I want to clarify certain things and just wrap the message up from the Tarot perspective. That will be able to be found on Patreon, patreon.com slash divine conversations. With that said, oh, it's under the, uh, either the inner balance or the full Monty package. Yes. With that said, I hope you guys have a fantastic week. I hope you have a fantastic moon phase. And I look forward to connecting with you again very, very soon. Yeah? Take care. Mwah! Bye. <laughs>